Hello TNT and welcome back to another week of Awana. I've missed you guys. Man, did you guys have an awesome Thanksgiving? I hope you did. I hope you ate all the best foods imaginable. I hope you got to watch a little football maybe. If you're not a football person, I hope you got to watch the parade or play, play some board games with family. That's what I did. I played a lot of board games with my family over Thanksgiving. It was fantastic. So I hope you had a great Thanksgiving too. But I've missed you guys. I'm glad to see you again. And I can't wait to see you at the Iwana store this week. That's right, because this Sunday, December 6th, and next week, December 13th, we are having a huge Iwana store sale. Oh my word, you ever come to the Iwana store and you look at all the stuff on the tables and you think, man, I wish I just had a little bit more money because I really want that, but it's a little bit out, out of price range for me. Well, I got some good news for you because this week and next week, the prices at the Iwana store, they're getting slashed. They're getting cut down. Some of those pricier items that you see on the tables, all right, those are going to be way cheaper than they usually are. Now, I need to let you know, this does not apply to things that are listed on pre-order in the Iwana store catalog. So if you are hoping that that trip to Canopy Lake was going to get reduced to like 500 shares. No, nah, think again, all right? But some of those things you see on the tables, those are going to be way, way cheaper. And in addition to that, maybe you're thinking, I should buy some gifts for my parents this year, right? Maybe I should use some of my Alana shares to buy Christmas presents for my parents. Yeah, maybe you should. That'd be a good thing for you to buy. We're going to have some items available in the Alana store for pretty cheap. So, I hope that you can use a little bit of your shares to buy stuff for your parents this year too. That'd be pretty nice. Or maybe not even your parents. Maybe you got brothers and sisters you want to buy stuff for. It'd be pretty cool, right? All right. So that is what's going on with the Iwana store this Sunday and the Sunday after that. Let's get to verses, okay? How's stuff been going? All right. I know that we've been running through the story of the Bible and we're almost done with the story of the Bible. We have this week, and then I think we only have one more week left in our story of the Bible. We're getting pretty close. We've talked about how the entire story of the Bible talks about Jesus. It looks forward to Jesus coming in the Old Testament through the books of history and the books of wisdom, the books of prophecy. Then you have Jesus come in the Gospels. He dies for our sins. He rises from the dead. He teaches us so many powerful things and leads a great example for us. And we talked about Acts last week where the church began and began spreading uh, Jesus' message throughout the entire world. And now we come to the next section of Scripture. Before we get into it, let's actually read the verse together. Are you ready? Here we go. Second Thessalonians. That's a big word. Try saying Thessalonians five times fast. You ready? One, two, three. Thessalonians, 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 Thessalonians. Not as easy as it seems, all right? I've had much practice over the years. Here we go. Second Thessalonians 2.15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and uphold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our, here's a real fun word, epistle whether by word or our epistle hey um what's an epistle do you know have you ever heard that word before let me tell you what an epistle is this is interesting an epistle is simply a letter why didn't they just use the word letter that's a really tough question to ask and frankly i don't know the answer why would you bother asking me that i wasn't ready for that question all right now an epistle is a letter do you like getting letters in the mail? When's the last time you got a letter in the mail? Was it your birthday? Man, when you get a letter in the mail, how do you feel? Do you get excited? Do you, do you say, oh, I got a letter. Who's it from? Uh, what they write inside. Is there money inside? That's what I think a lot of times, all right? Now, when I was your age, I got very excited when a letter came in the mail because it could be from all sorts of people. It could be from my cousins, my friends. Sometimes I had friends who I hadn't seen in forever, but I miss them. And I was so glad to get letters from them. But every once in a while, I would have family members who would go on big trips and they would send me a letter. So for example, when I was your age, I got this postcard. 
from Okinawa, Japan, which is where my grandparents went on basically a vacation to see my uncle at the time. And I think it's really cool. You know what? I was so excited to get a postcard all the way from Japan that I still have it. And this was like 15 years ago or something like that, man. This was so awesome to get in the mail. Well, guess what? Back in Paul's day, when these were being written, people were excited to get letters. People would get letters from other Christians. And these Christians would explain really powerful things and reveal truths about Jesus that people didn't already know. People had questions. They would say, well, why did Jesus do this? Or how does the Holy Spirit work again? Can the Holy Spirit do this or that? Or they'll say, well, what's going to happen in the future? And guys like Paul and Peter, James, John, Jude, they would write letters to other Christians answering their questions. Or sometimes Christians would be getting into a bunch of trouble and people would write letters saying, hey, cut it out and remind them of the truths that Jesus had taught. So, for example, you have some letters that are named after the person that wrote them. Who do you think wrote first and second Peter by chance? Peter, good, all right. So Peter wrote both first and second Peter. Who do you think wrote James? James, well done. Uh, who do you think wrote Philemon? Did you say Philemon? See, that's where you're wrong. Philemon didn't write Philemon. Paul wrote a letter to Philemon, and that's why we call it Philemon. Confusing, right? So you have guys like 1st, 2nd, 3rd John and Jude. Those are written by John and Jude, but also you have 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus. They're not written by Timothy and Titus. They were written by Paul to Timothy and Titus. It's kind of confusing, but you have to look at each letter and try to understand why it's called what it's called. But then sometimes you would have letters that were written not just to one person, but to entire cities. So who do you think the letter of Romans was written to? This is a little bit tougher. Romans, hmm. Romans was written to the city of Rome. Or who do you think the book of Hebrews was written to? The book of Hebrews was simply written to Hebrews that were all over the world, not in any one city. And then you had letters like Ephesians, who were written to the city of Ephesus. You had the uh, uh, letter of Colossians to uh, the church in Colossae. All right. So here we go. Here's a tough one. Second Thessalonians. What do you think? Do you think Thessalonians is named after the person that wrote Thessalonians? Or do you think it's named after the group of people that Thessalonians was written to? What do you think? Thessalonians was written to the church in Thessalonica, which is in Greece. I think it's also pronounced Thessaloniki, all right? Like Nike is in the shoe. Not a coincidence, by the way. I'll tell you more about that another day, all right? Thessaloniki, or Nika is where the Thessalonians lived, and Paul was writing to them, the, Thess the Thessalonians. This is actually the second letter that Paul had written to them. That's why we call it 2 Thessalonians. There's a bunch of letters like that in the New Testament, like Corinthians. Paul wrote 1 and 2 Corinthians, and here's a fun little fact. There's a third letter that we don't have in the Bible that Paul says that he also wrote to them. Then you had guys like Peter, who he wrote not just one, but two different letters to people he was writing to. Uh, Paul wrote two letters to a guy named Timothy. John wrote three letters, and he wrote Revelation and the Gospel of John. John did a lot of work in the New Testament, all right? But Paul wrote two letters that we know of to the Thessalonians. And here, we have Paul explaining basically why he wrote this second letter to Thessalonians. See, he wrote one letter, but then people in in Thessalonica, they got confused because there were all these people who were explaining things about God and they weren't sure whether what they were hearing was right or wrong. But a lot of it was wrong. So even after Paul wrote that first letter, he quickly wrote a second letter to explain to them that a lot of the things they were learning about what was going to happen in the future, it didn't line up with what was actually going to happen. So that's why he says, Therefore, brethren, stand and uphold the traditions which you were taught, 
whether by word or our epistle, our letter. He's simply saying, people of Thessalonica, don't get confused by all of this different stuff you're being taught, all right? Instead, focus on the truth and traditions you've already learned, whether it was taught to you in person by me or somebody else, or taught to you by our letters. So that is what Paul is explaining here in 2 Thessalonians. Now, you only have one more week left in the big story of the Bible, right? And so you're also learning all of your books of the New Testament. You already learned all your books of the Old Testament. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now that in two weeks, we're going to try saying the entire Bible together, all right? Right here, all right? I got to work on it too because I, as we learned a few weeks ago, I'm really fuzzy on those minor prophets, all right? Together, we're going to try saying the entire Bible books of the Bible, okay? But for now, good luck on this. We'll see if you want to store for that big sale, and we'll talk to you next time. Have a good week.